peace and grace be with you all saints brother mike man of god on fight for christ um god bless you guys all the new subs god bless you god bless you god bless you um i just want to thank everyone that's um took time to subscribe to this channel everyone that sh ever shared my videos you guys have my permission to to, to um share my videos you know um we all doing this for the glory of god and, and to give him glory and uh, he deserves all the credit for this channel uh, without him i am nothing and um i just want to just um uh, just thank you guys for um, all of you guys support, you know, those who call me, those who uh, attend the live stream church service that we have, you know, may the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And um, we are all in this together, you guys. We are all in this together. Every man, woman and child um, who believe in Jesus Christ, we are all waiting patiently for his return and you know we cannot um stray away from that you know there's a lot of people that's tired a lot of people that's saying why lord why you know why haven't you came yet and um there's a lot of things a lot of questions but we got to let god be god you know and we we just have to remain faithful to the lord and there's a lot of people that don't know about christ even today there's a lot of people that you know won't surrender to his to his will you know but everybody wants to go to heaven but see there's a there's a price to pay we have to surrender and and give up our lives and our way of living and, and accept jesus christ and, and 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 learn his ways you know because our ways are are wrong and then the second part of this video is going to be talking about those of you that are struggling with sin Sin is something that we we all struggle with. Sin is something that um, it presents itself to everyone. Every every person that's alive, Satan is going to tempt you. How do I know that? Because Satan even tempted our Lord. He said he tempted Jesus, and he knew that Jesus was God. He knew it. He knew it. But he thought that while God was in the flesh, since he was in this man body. It was his chance to, to, to tempt God because God was in the, the, the weak flesh, you know, because the flesh is weak, the Bible tells us, but the spirit is willing. So that was his first opportunity to try to get God to, to see him. But Jesus passed all the tests. He passed them all. And he did it for us. You know, he did it for us, you guys. So it is our turn right now to, to, to suffer for our Lord, you know, there's so many people that don't want to suffer and they want to hurry up and, and, and just get up out of here. And I understand that, you know, I've been suffering for a long time. We, you know, we all suffer in different ways, but, you know, for God, I'm willing to go through anything for the Lord. You know, look at what he went through for us. You can't imagine what he went through on Calvary. You just can't. You just can't. Passion of the Christ tried to, you know, do a good job in, in portraying what Christ went through, but I'm pretty sure it was probably 10 times worse than that. You know, uh, an innocent man hanging on a cross, you know, for, for us. While we was in our sin, God died for us while we were yet in our sins. And, and to think about the, the love of God when he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. The love of God. Think about that love. Just think about that. While they nailing him on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. This is God talking. Father, forgive them. We know that Christ and the Father were one. And he said, Father, forgive them. And we know that Jesus Christ up there in heaven, he intercedes for us. Every day he's praying for us that we can turn from our wicked ways. Because every man's heart is, is evil. Our heart is evil. There is no not one righteous, no not one, the Bible says. Not, no, no one down here that you've ever seen is righteous. Not one. Not even that little baby that just got born is righteous. You see, we born into sin. But God, 
God. The gift of God is eternal life. So when you accept Jesus Christ, when you accept Christ, you have that eternal life. You will never die. That's why we need Jesus Christ. You know, God has so much for us, but we got to understand that we need him. We got to understand who we are, that no, not one is righteous. We all are filthy, dirty rags compared to his riches and his glory and his righteousness. And through him, only through Christ and through the love of Jesus Christ, that we can um, share what he really meant for us to share. You see, in the garden... Everything was made righteous and God did everything and God dwelt with man and God came in the cool of the day to talk to them and he he physically came down here and talked to them I believe and and when they made that 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 choice the sinful choice to eat the apple after he told them what would happen if you do eat the apple you know it separated God from man and what did God do after they ate the apple God prepared them clothes you see, God punished them, but he didn't disown them. Praise God. He punished them, but he didn't disown them. See, uh, God did not disown us. He did not disown us because if he would have disowned us, he wouldn't have, himself wouldn't have came down here and died for us. He didn't disown us. He punished us. And any loving parent right now on this God green earth will punish his children if you truly love them. If they do something wrong. You wouldn't you wouldn't uh, buy your, uh, your, your child something nice if they was in the kitchen playing with fire. You wouldn't do that, would you? If your child was three, four years old and they playing with the stove and, and, and setting something on fire in the kitchen, you would discipline your child. Why? Because you love them. And why? If they might do it again and they might harm you and they might harm themselves. So you discipline your child to let them know that it's wrong and to let them know that not to do that anymore. And the same thing goes with God. We discipline our children because we love our children. God disciplines us because he loves us. He loves us. And I thank God for the conviction. I thank God for the precious and Holy Spirit that we have today that can that convicts us when we do something wrong against God. I, I thank God for that conviction because that conviction lets us know that we're doing something wrong and it lets us know that we need to get back right with Christ and we need to repent and turn back to him. Thank God for it. And I thank God for you that's watching this video. And I thank God for all the people that, that have accepted Jesus Christ. Because you just don't know what you've done when you accepted Jesus Christ. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. We got to start walking in the anointing of our life. We got to stop listening to people that's not holding on to sound doctrine. There's so many people that's holding on to their own itching ears and lustful of the flesh. And we got to just look for God. So many different people are doing these things on the internet and they're doing things all over and the churches are, are preaching this watered down uh, uh, the gospel. They're not preparing the church for, for the imminency return of Jesus Christ and they're not preparing people that things are going to happen and we got to hold on and the only thing we have to hold on to is Christ. You can't hold on to a bank account. You can't hold on to friends. You can't hold on to, to your job. You can't hold on to the government. You can't hold on to nothing but Jesus Christ. Everything else will fail when things start falling apart. The only thing will not fail is your faith in Christ. He said, lean not into your own understanding. You're not going to understand the things that's about to hit this world. You're not going to understand it unless you turn and open your Bible up and get around other Christians that know what's going on around you and knowing that nobody else can deliver you from that but Jesus Christ himself. Praise the living God. I want to see when these things come out of the sky and a bomb drop and this whole city go up. I want to see is your job going to be able to prepare you for that. Is your 401k going to be able to, to, to deliver you from the wrath to come, like Jesus said? He said, watch for the sun from heaven. Watch for the sun from heaven who shall deliver you from the wrath to come. Praise God. Nothing going to be able to save you. Not your family, not your loved ones, not your job, not nothing. Nothing on this God green earth is going to be able to prepare your heart for what's about to happen. You got to have Jesus Christ. You got to trust in the one 
who saves. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Get right with the Lord. Accept Him today. How do you accept Him? By believing in Him. You clear your heart. You believe in the only begotten Son. And you say this prayer that I'm about to say right now. Just close your eyes. Empty your heart. Let's go before the throne room of God. God said come boldly before the throne. Come boldly right now. Yes, you've done wrong. Yes, you fall short of the glory of God. Yes, you've done all these things. But you know what? God died for you. God took all them sins and he died for you. He's waiting for you to cast all of your sin that you've ever committed. He's, he's waiting on you to give it to him. Because only he can take away your sins. You see, Muhammad can't take away your sins. You see, Buddha can't take away your sins. You see, all these other gods that they say there is only one God, and that is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's no other God that ever walked this God green earth and died on the cross for your sins. Zeus didn't do it. All these other gods didn't do it. There's only one God, and his name is Jesus Christ. His name is Yahweh. You see? And we need him today. And we're going to boldly go before the throne. Every eyes closed. Every head bow. Right now. We're going to go to the throne room of God. Lord Jesus. I am a sinner. And Lord. Every sin that you have in that book. I have committed. And I am guilty Lord. I ask you today Father God. I humbly. I humble myself before you Father God. In all your glory. I ask that you please take away every sin that I've ever committed Lord Jesus. I am guilty from, from him. And I love you and I ask that you wash them clean with your precious blood that you shed on Calvary for me, Lord. I accept this free gift, Father God, and I ask that you give me a new heart, a new mind, a mind and a heart to serve you, Father God. Lord, help me to be a light in this dark world, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And you know what you did right there? You gave Satan a migraine. You gave him a migraine because you've accepted the only one that can ever save you. There's nobody that ever died for you. Nobody that ever died for you. Jesus died for you. You know, Jesus died for you. Nobody would ever give their life for you. People say they will, you know. People say they will. But there's only one God that, that he, he died for us. And a lot of people say, well, how can God die? How can God die? How can God die? A lot of Muslims that tell me that. Well, how can God have a son? You see? Well, how can God ever say that he loved if he wasn't loving someone from the beginning? Praise God. If it's only Allah and uh, if it's only Allah and Muhammad is his prophet, then who is Allah ever loved? Who who have he loved from the beginning? Only the Trinity tells of a loving God because the Trinity is three in one. So God loved before the foundation of the world. Who was God loving when he said he loved? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Who was he loving then? Only the, the God of the Bible explains love because in the beginning was the Trinity a love. It was a love. It was love between God himself. Praise God. If it's only Allah and there's no other God but Allah, who was Allah loving before the foundation of the world? See, the God of the Bible says that God is three in one and those three was in perfect communion with each other. It explains the love of God and he loved us so much that he created us in his image. And that's why you love your child and that's why you love your wife. And that's why when people meet each other, they love each other because of that love comes from God. Praise God, y'all. Hey, look, I could talk to you guys for a long time, man. There's so much that I have to say. But uh, I love you guys. And I just want to say that Jesus loves you. And if he descended from heaven today, you ready. You know why? Because you just accepted the only one that has the keys to heaven and hell. Jesus has the key. And if you die today, he wouldn't look at you as that evil sinner that you just was before you said that prayer. He's looking at you now. As his child, as his son, he, you, are, you have been adopted in the royal family. And now God the Father isn't looking at you as that sinful person, all that sins you've done. He's looking at you now as a holy man of God because now he's looking at you like he's looking at his son. And God never committed a sin. Praise the living God. Stay tuned for a very important video. I love you guys and may the Lord Jesus Christ be with us all in these final moments.